So this is the answer any possible future bullshit I'm gonna have to deal with. Um, I'm calling for revolution. I'm calling for uh, war against war. Right? I don't have any weapons. I have no inclination to hurt anybody, to destroy any property. The revolution I am calling for is a peaceful, prolonged revolution where we occupy the streets and we take over with peaceful demonstrations. So we take over the streets and the sidewalk and I want, I, I see all of Louisville getting out in the streets on November 1st. I see Tahir Square at Jefferson Square. So my vision of revolution is a peaceful, prolonged revolution modeled after the Egyptian revolution in 2011 starting January 25th and Valclav Havel's Czech, Czechoslovakian revolution when they overthrew communism before Slovakia and the Czech Republic split apart. The Velvet Revolution. So the Velvet Revolution, Egyptian Revolution, um, those are the two models. Uh, the Civil Rights Movement in America. So these are um, all the influences uh, that the revolution that I uh, envision are coming from. So it's peaceful. Don't get it wrong. I don't, I mean, like, it's not possible to have a violent revolution. It would be a total bloodbath, so do not be violent at all. In fact, if you are violent, then you are being detrimental to the movement. You would be hurting the movement. So if you feel the need to be violent, don't participate or don't call yourself Occupy. Call yourself something else um, because that's not what... I don't know. I don't think that's what Occupy should be about. So, uh, so that's my um, disclaimer. So, carrying on with the demands of the 99%, the 99declaration.org. Legislation to guarantee transparency. We talked about that. We want to limit senators to only one six-year term. Representatives cannot serve more than two two-year terms consecutively. A lot of these career politicians get in there and then they become senators or congressman forever. Here in Kentucky, I saw that Mitch McConnell has been in office for 27 years. 27 years, Mitch McConnell has been in office for 27 years. Mubarak was in there for 30 years. And guess who has given him all that money? Mitch McConnell was giving Mubarak all that money. Mitch McConnell has been stained in all the dirty politics for the last 30 years. Since 1970, our wages have been stagnated. That means while oil industries and corporate America and Wall Street, all their profits are having, they have record profits and making tons of money, having golden parachutes off the taxpayer dime. Of the American worker, the wages have stagnated. Adjusted for inflation, we're making the same amount that we were making 40 years ago. Our purchasing power has not gone up, it has gone down. So when they're making a ton of money and we're not, we're actually going down. So for the last 30 years, the class war that has been waged has been one of Mitch McConnell's pet projects. Mitch McConnell's been engaged in class war from day one, okay? So if they want to say, oh, don't talk that class warfare shit. Bush tax cuts was class warfare. You're defending the wealthy and the rich. You're making sure they can get away with anything. You're making sure they can get away with murder, getting away with health care deaths and coal company deaths and mine collapses and... You know, putting people in prison and, and not giving good education and living in an uh, ignorant society. Kentucky has low on education and health care and wealth. So, comparably to the United States of America, Kentucky is poor, sick, and dumb. And we all know this. We all know. We see it all the time. People say, oh, don't talk about Kentucky. You know, that's, that's not nice. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's it's true that not every Kentuckian has no teeth or barefoot, you know, not every Kentuckian is doing meth, not every Kentuckian can't read. Forty percent of Kentuckians can't read, but that means the vast majority of Kentuckians can read above a kindergarten level. So it's not it's not all bad. When I point out the negative statistics of Kentucky, it's overall just to kind of say that we are starting behind everybody else, okay? Kentucky, compared to the rest of the country, is a shithole. We are down in the dumps. we got the worst statistics in every indicator that I can tell. Child abuse, prisons, racism, poor people, homelessness, um, animal abuse, child abuse, spousal abuses, go, go on and on and on. So, since we have... <laughs> It's not funny, it's embarrassing, but like since um, we have so many problems, 
it's up to people, progressives, to speak out and to actually reach to um, anybody willing to listen, anybody that, uh, you know, and explain to them what the Occupy Movement is, explain to them, um, you know, try to teach them or try to have dialogue at least, and if they're not willing to teach them dialogue, and then you can kind of learn from dialogue, I think. So carrying on, the demands of the 99%. A constitutional amendment to provide for gender balance in the Senate. So a constitutional amendment for gender balance. So there should be about 50-50 in all representations. In all legislatures all across the country should be about 50-50. So one Senate seat from each state is to be reserved for a man and one for a woman. So every senator from every state, one man, one woman. Gender balance. Number 12, a constitutional amendment to more accurately reflect the will of the people in presidential elections and abolish the electoral college in favor of the popular vote. Get rid of the popular vote. Get rid of all, or the, <laughs> get rid of the electoral college. Keep the popular vote. The popular vote's what I thrive on. We would actually need democracy. We need the popular vote. The popular vote in Kentucky are staying home. 88% in the primary said, fuck it, I ain't going to try to even choose anybody. I ain't even going to try. When you got uh, independent Kentucky who's trying to get independents in there so they can vote. So that would have raised the turnout rate. That was a solution to raise the turnout rate if that was an actual problem that somebody wants to solve. Section 3 of the 99 Declaration. Whereas our government and political system are corrupted by elected officials and appointed bureaucrats who accept bribes and gifts during and after their tenure. Whereas such officials have participated in a revolving door system between the private lobbying sector and the government governmental positions they hold, whereas the government officials have engaged in unregulated insider trading with the same companies and financial institutions they are empowered to govern, whereas laws and regulations which require minimum prison sentences for any public officials, members of the military, employees, or family members, or individuals convicted of public corruption, insider training, trading, or bribery are not strong enough. We therefore demand the following. Number one, legislation or regulations to strengthen and reinforce penalties for anyone found guilty of illegal lobbying and to ban gifts of monetary value to politicians, elected or appointed officials, and government employees. Number two, legislation to strengthen and enforce laws regarding elected or appointed government officials, members of the military, or any of their immediate family members found. Guilty of insider training, public corruption or bribery, receiving gifts during their tenure, holding stock in any company they do business with while performing the duties of their position slash employment or for five years after leaving said government service. Legislation that prohibits the placement of any person to a position with the regulatory agency or bureau when that person holds stakes in the companies or entitles that he or she is meant to regulate. So prohibit that placement. Section 4, whereas our privately controlled, virtually unregulated, and extractive monetary system, unjust trade policies, and regressive tax systems have resulted in an ever-widening disparity in economic circumstances for average citizens and have greatly favored enrichment of the financial elites, whereas our Congress has permitted, aided, and abetted endemic fraud by predatory lenders, bankers, speculators, and financiers, who have deprived millions of Americans of their homes, property, and livelihoods, whereas the repeal of the Glass-Steagall Act by Bill Clinton led directly to unsound banking practices and to grant a dose overextension of speculation throughout the financial sector and created dangerous threats to the financial condition of the country, which resulted in the financial catastrophe of 2008. Repeal the Glass-Steagall Act. Reinstitute. <laughs> Undo the repeal. Reinstitute the Glass-Steagall Act. Bill Clinton repealed it, said Glass-Steagall no more. Glass-Steagall took the banking industry and separated the commercial in interest from the investment banking interest. So that way the banking people who were uh, gambling with the money and having high-risk investments wouldn't affect the regular people's money who was using it as savings and checking and for other uh, common financial transactions. So the Glass-Steagall would separate those two where they could have invested the money and if they lost then they would have lost the money but the commercial banks, the money that you have your money in would still be intact and you know have all the money and still be okay. That's the Glass-Steagall Act. Uh, whereas our government's lack of fiscal responsibility has produced a national debt close to 16 
trillion dollars, whereas the Congressional Budget Office projects a deficit drop under the current plan that is insufficient to bring down this debt, whereas the trade deficit of the United States is over $800 billion, and this disparity in trade significantly weakens the overall national economy. We therefore demand the following, laws or regulations to establish a progressive tax rate to govern household income regardless of its source, such that no household with an income at or below double the poverty line shall be subject to federal income taxation and tax deductions are eliminated. So, poor people, you are taxed no more. Your income, you're not being taxed anymore. Do away with the income tax. Number two, tax laws be written to ensure that A, any corporation or entity doing business and generating income in the United States, Puerto Rico, and other U.S. territories shall be fully taxed on that income by removing deductions, subsidies, and loopholes regardless of corporate domicile. After legitimate business expenses, excluding lobbying and political expenses pre-tax, net profits will be assessed at the prevailing corporate tax rate, which will never be lower than the highest individual tax rate. C. Tax havens are not permitted and that profits are described above will be taxed at the U.S. corporate tax rate. 3. Legislation to ban speculative financial instruments, derivatives, and credit default swaps into all primary residential home foreclosures. If banks have falsified documents, signatures using robo-signing, then banks shall lose their claim on those properties. So, if it's a cookie cutter, rubber stamping type of operation where you're using robots to sign signatures to kick families out of their households, fuck you. That ain't real. Forgery? You can't forge fucking documents, you fucking dicks. Those guilty of criminal behavior and in control of fraud at the largest banking institutions must not be rewarded but must be required to repay their victims, the people, full restitution. Number five, Congress reclaims its sovereign ability to create money by placing the Federal Reserve under the Treasury. New money would be issued and circulated to promote the general welfare of the nation, while the current money would be replaced using the same system that was used in the transition from the gold standard. Rejection of the corporatist free trade policies and tariffs implemented since the early 1980s by returning to the successful Hamiltonian fair trade policies and tariffs, which provided much of our nation's revenue from 1789 through the late 1970s. So not free trade, but fair trade. The number seven, the legislative and executive branches must effectively address the trade deficit so that our businesses prosper. More jobs are created and therefore more revenue produced that can be taxed and used to pay down the national debt so that our descendants will not have to carry that burden. Legislation to reinstate the Glass-Steagall Act and provide for strict enforcement of the Sherman Antitrust Act in order to prevent the practices that led to the financial catastrophe of 2008 and the Great Recession that followed. Number nine, the legislative and executive branches of the federal government must swiftly move to significantly reduce the national debt through a balanced approach of increasing revenue and reductions in spending. Spending reductions should be achieved through cutting waste and redundancy as well as budgetary reductions in military and defense. Section five. Whereas the people have a right to clean air, clean water, untainted soil, and safe food, and it is the responsibility of the government to protect those rights in order to secure the well-being of current and future generations, whereas our government has failed to enact and enforce laws preventing the destruction of our natural environment while willfully misinterpreting and ignoring empirical evidence of significant harm caused by human interaction with that environment. We therefore demand the following. Number one, legislation to establish an independently funded program for the development of safe, non-toxic, reusable, renewable, and carbon neutral sources of energy, such as, but not limited to, solar power, wind power, geothermal power. Gouth County High School's got geothermal power. Big ups to GCHS. And Wildcats, the thermonuclear fusion, the funding of which shall be derived by levying a tax on those energy sources that produce carbon emissions. Legislation to provide the Environmental Protection Agency and other appropriate agencies the power to regulate and penalize business entities that intentionally or recklessly bring harm to the environment. The fines, penalties, and or criminal charges must be equivalent to the full impact of damages incurred to the environment, taking into consideration the lasting impact brought upon the environment. 
laws that eliminate the protection afforded to any employee, officer, or director of any organization or business entity that is directly or indirectly engaged in intentional or reckless practices that bring harm to the environment. Number four, I will get to in the next video. So, viva la revolucion. Occupy Louisville, November 1st to the 6th. Get out in the streets. Days of rage. Days of fun. <laughs> Days of fun.